let's start with the most important question. Sure. Uh, uh, how frustrating is it when you look for yourself on Google to never be able to find yourself because of some other pop star? Uh, so, yeah, are you talking about my arch nemesis, Chris Martin? Mm -hmm. I am, yes. Coldplay, the Coldplay singer. Yeah, I, yeah, I'll never, I'll always be in Wikipedia as a disambiguation. I know that from, from now <laughs> until the end of time. So I've kind of just uh, come to terms with the fact that I'll always, uh, I'll never be Coldplay. <laughs> now, has it ever helped truthfully with uh, restaurant reservations? Never, never once. The only thing I ever get is when I sign my name, they go, hey, you have the same name as Coldplay. <laughs> Um, so you basically appreciate the movie Office Space even more with the Michael Bolton reference. I do. I, I, I connected very much so with that when, when that happened. <laughs> I think the, the one difference is that most people like Coldplay. I, no, that's not true actually. Okay, I well, only hear from people that hate Coldplay. They're like, oh, Chris Martin, I hate Coldplay. <laughs> I, uh, it's weird. I think that they have at least a few songs that are pretty good. I think they're fantastic, especially their, their, their earlier stuff. And the thing that I always get the most is I'll suddenly see a headline that says, Chris Martin and Gwyneth Paltrow, divorce. Chris Martin dating Jennifer Lawrence. And then I get a little jealous. And then, and then I tell my wife that I'm jealous and then she gets mad at me and then, you know, we're, we're here again. <laughs> um, all right, let's jump into why I get to talk to you today. Sure. All can decide. Everyone's gonna see your face and they're gonna say, I know this guy, joking. Uh, talk a little bit about, um, well, first of all, like who you are and like a little background on you, if you sure. know what I mean. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I guess how did I come to be in Korea making a really crazy little uh, web drama? Uh, it's like partially in English, partially in Korean. Uh, so I actually, I went to, to undergrad for computer science and math back in the day at Virginia Tech. Uh, I graduated there and I decided, you know what, I want to make movies instead. So I moved to LA, I worked at RSA, uh, Ridley Scott's like commercial company is like the lowest to the low, you know. I literally remember one day I was cleaning leaves off Ridley Scott's uh, patio and I was sitting there thinking to myself, I was like, you know what, I feel like I could do movies in Korea because I was in somewhere else, you know, I, I was in love with Korean, uh, with, with Korean cinema. Uh, Pak chan and Bong joon -ho. like I saw uh, Sympathy for Mr. Vengeance, like back in the day. It was a drunk Amazon buy one night during college and it just turned out to like completely change my life, basically. Uh, so I bought that, I discovered like Korean directors and just fell in love with the stuff they were doing. So as I'm cleaning like leaves off uh, Mr. Scott's patio, I was like, you know what? I would love to try to go to Korea and try to do some of the stuff, try to, to try to make movies with these guys that I'm like really obsessed with. Um, so that was 2006. Uh, I, I was like six months out of college. I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna move to Korea. So I moved to Korea. And at the time, the only thing I knew about Korea was the Busan Film Festival. Uh, and I was like, okay, all the movies in Korea must be made in Busan because that's where the huge film festival is. I get out here, that's not the case at all. Like, there's a lot of shooting that happens in Busan, but everything is planned, everything happens in Seoul. So I was here for about, I was in Busan for about six months and eventually I came up to Seoul and I, I, uh, I taught English so that I could learn Korean. I studied Korean out here. Uh, I made my first short film out here. Uh, I started to meet people in the film industry out here and kind of do the things that I'd really wanted to do. Uh, and ended up working in a post house over here that we're actually gonna do a post on this show at. Uh, the guys that did Snowpiercer uh, and did a lot of, they're probably one of the, they're probably the biggest post house in Korea. Um, and then at some point in there, I ended up going to NYU uh, for film school over in Singapore though, NYU Tish Asia. So I was over there for three years. And the whole time I was kind of back and forth between Singapore and, and Korea, uh, making films, making you know commercials, doing all that kind of stuff. And so that's kind of like, that's guys. I guess that's kind of how I ended up here in the in the semi short uh, story. Uh, specifically on this project, yeah. Uh, how tough was to to get this one off the ground? It was tough because it's weird, right? Like people, people. It's sorry, one sorry. It's my assistant director. <laughs> um, uh, this one was tough because it's like, uh, what's the market? You know, what's the sport? We have this like. Uh, Partially American audience, partially you know Asian audience. We're doing something, uh, all all you know, almost all set in Korea, uh, and it's this it's this thing that I don't think anybody has tried yet. You know, where it's a truly like global co-production, right? Where we have some actors from all around the world, we have some uh, we have production staff from all around the world, and trying to make those things all happen all all in one project is is kind of insane in a, in a big way. So we're really excited, and it was it was hard, but at the same time when we talked to Vicky. Uh, when I talked to Tammy for, for the first time about the project, she was just head over heels for it because she feels that it fits the audience at Vicky very well. Uh, who is, you know, there's this huge audience that loves Korean stuff outside of Korea. 
you know, and so that was kind of the excitement from Vicky about that. Um, what was the original, uh, well, let's actually take one step back for a sure. second. Uh, I'll have a synopsis and I'll explain to people, but maybe you can also explain like, what's your like log line or how would you explain the series to people? How would I explain the series to people? Let's see, I'd say it's about uh, this American college student who's obsessed with Korean drama, who one day just finds herself magically transported into her favorite drama. So it's like a, a Purple Rose of Cairo meets like Pleasantville kind of, kind of story. Uh, and, you know, she finds herself in this place called Drama World, which is basically Toontown from Roger Rabbit, but with K-drama stars. Uh, and none of them know that they're in dramas. They all think that they're just living their own lives. Uh, and she, she comes in and she's tasked with trying to help the story. Uh, but as she tries to help, she screws a lot of things up. And she, she ends up trying to have to fix uh, all the things that are going wrong. Uh, so it's also a little la last action hero. A little bit of that too. Uh, um, all these movies that I love. I, I'm like a huge like 80s Zemeckis fan. Yeah. So By the way, why wouldn't you be? Yeah. Well, <laughs> there, I, I just feel like my thing is, why can't we have more of that stuff? When I saw Guardians of the Galaxy, I was like, oh, why can't we have things that are just fun again? Because I, you know, you look back to Back to the Future, you look back to a lot of these movies, and they're just, what a good time, you know what I mean? And they're still real at the same time. So hopefully... I would love if I, you know, can continue to develop and get better as a filmmaker to continue telling stories that are, that are, are real, but like over the top and fun. Uh, what are the rules of the drama world universe? Uh, do you know what I mean? Like, do you sure. guys like sort of set up like a little Bible, like what we can and can't do or like, you know what I mean? A little bit, you know, uh, my co-writer Josh Billig and I, as we, as we were doing this, we, we would invent rules sometimes as we went along, but it's like, we actually do, when, when Claire lands in Drama World, she gets this book. She gets a facilitator's guidebook to Drama World. And so, when she has this, these are the things, these are the rules of Drama World. This is, uh, this, these are the laws, these are the things, you're, you're, the way you're supposed to do things. These are, you know, how you can help the drama. Because when she lands, she finds another person from the real world, Seth, who's also there. And he's kind of behind the scenes, Cupid. Because if you think about rom-coms, right? Rom-coms always have a meet cute situation. You know, it's like, oh, how did you just run into that person? Oh, your briefcase you got switched. How did that happen? And so he's the one facilitating the meet cutes, right? And so that's what Claire, when she comes in too, she's also a facilitator in the same way. And so those are some some of the laws are like, how what can you do? You're always supposed to stay in the background. You're never supposed to be part of the story. What happens to Claire though? She becomes part of the story. Uh <laughs> Memorable moments from filming. Uh, where are you in the production schedule right We're now? We're a little over halfway through. So thus far, any memorable moments like shit that you will always remember? Yeah, there's definitely there's definitely some stuff. It's it's kind of a it's a cameo appearance thus. I don't know if I want to talk about it too much. I, it's I, super fun though. Um, what's interesting about this is it's often hard to justify how you can get cameos and celebrities to be in your series, yeah. show, movie, whatever, and have it feel organic to the story, yeah. but you guys definitely have it organic to the story. So uh, talk a little bit about, was it challenging to land the famous you know, uh, people here, or was it one of these things where uh, the connections and you know, agents were like, oh, this is great? It's mostly through connections. It's like, who do we know? And who can we get to come out? So it's like between the producing staff, myself, like Sean, everybody else, it's like, all right, who can we reach out to? And we reach out to them and t kind of tell them about the story and what they're going to be doing. Uh, we just had another one we filmed two days ago, another cameo. And it's, it is, it's fun. To, and explaining to them, it's like, okay, so you're a character in a world, and you don't know you're a character. And they're going to like, oh, okay, I get it. You know, and then people start to have fun with it. Uh, but it is, it's, it is, it's sort of a natural, it is, it's, it's much more natural for us to have these famous faces than a lot of things, you know, it's, and some of the cameos, we do some really ridiculous stuff with them, so I'm, I'm really excited for people to see kind of what happens to some of their favorite stars. Was this one of the things that you originally, when you were pitching the show, were you sort of like, hey, we're going to be able to work in cameos from people, and this is just another way of, like, to help get financing? Yeah, that was definitely one of the things we talked about, because it does, it comes natural, it's like, of course, drama world is full of drama stars, you know what I mean? And so the idea is that these, these people are, are constantly playing new characters in different dramas. So the idea that within drama world, you have your hospital drama happening at the same time that your restaurant drama is happening, at the same time that you, know, you have these ancient you know, Korean dramas happening. And so they all kind of live together unbeknownst to all the other ones. Because 
to them, they're focused on their own story, right? And so it's like, if they would go to the hospital, maybe they'd go find, you know, for example, it's ER in there, but out here it's, you know, it's something else, so. Uh, when you pitched it, what was the original running time that you were suggesting and how much did you, how much is it gonna be now? Uh, I kind of pitched between 15 and 20 minutes. I'd say we're probably gonna be about 15 minute episodes. It's kind of what I made me for. That's not bad at all. Yeah, um, it's one of those things too, because people are gonna be watching on their phones, right? And so it's like, I'm trying to make this, the way I'm making it, I'm trying to make it like a movie, basically. You know, we're shooting it like a film, uh, but at the same time, we have to remember how people are going to watch it as well. And so it's like, we have episodic cliffhangers all the time. We have things that hopefully keep bringing people back to the next episodes. Uh, one of the things that I noticed here in Korea, and, and I was saying this to a friend uh, yesterday in the States, I feel that in America, people are on their smartphones a lot. Sure. And, you know, it's, it's becoming more and more prevalent where people are comfortable on their phones 24-7. Korea is next level shit. Like I was on the train and everyone, old- You just see everybody just like this? Yeah, no, everyone, yeah. old to young. We're yeah. talking every age group, like the baby had a, a goddamn new Samsung. Yeah. I'm kidding, but look, it's a different level here. Sure. Um, is it one of the- This internet's faster here too, so. <laughs> well, that's the thing though. Like I'm, I'm very curious, um, uh, does that sort of play into like the dynamic of the show? Because everyone mm -hmm. here is so wired. I mean, not so much because it's like, this is more like within the dramas and it's like on TV, you don't see people staring at their phones as much. Like we definitely, you know, we definitely have phones and we have that stuff going on, but it's, it plays a little bit less into the show because, you know, they're always dealing with their, these huge dramatic things. So they don't need to be on their phones watching drama all the time either. But you see what I'm talking about. Yeah, for like, sure. it, it's, it's really crazy. Getting into the real world now though, how is it in terms of, because for people that are watching mm -hmm. and for people like me who are sure. not as familiar with the Korean dramas sure. and all that stuff, like how how popular is the genre in Korea and how popular is it really around the world? It's pretty insane. I mean, Korean drama, it's like, it'll always be popular here because it's like, it's just, it's TV popular basically. But then the way that it, that it's spread across the world, like you have uh, My Love From Another Star with you know, billions and billions of views in China. You have uh, the remake possibilities in, in the States are kind of uh, going crazy right now. You have these huge amounts of fans and it's this like KCON, I don't know if you know about KCON, but KCON happens in LA every year. And oh, wait a minute, I do know about this. Okay, so KCON, if you look at the attendance, it like doubles every year. So it's like 30,000 one year, 60,000 next year. I mean, it's gonna be insane. To see, you're gonna see 100,000 fans flying from all around the world to land in one place just to see this, 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 you know, K-pop, K-drama, all that kind of stuff. So it's like, it's really amazing because if you look at America, right, like America's always exported really well, but then Korea, being a much smaller country, seeing it export its pop culture in such a huge way is, is kind of unbelievable how it's happened. And the fact that it's still so popular, it's popular in Japan, it's popular in China, Europe, Latin America, you know, uh, the US, it's kind of all over. It, it is interesting, um, especially with Vicky uh, okay. and what they're aiming to do on sure. the platform. Um, sort of talk about, you mentioned that it's mostly, uh, so is it mostly in English? Is it mostly in Korean? What? We're probably about half and half actually. So the aim is for like subtitles? Yeah, it'll have subtitles. Which I was super happy to see like Narcos be successful because it's like, oh look, see subtitles and English, it can work. <laughs> <laughs> um, I still haven't watched Narcos uh, it's a good time. right now, but I heard it's quite good. Uh, talk a little bit about mandates from the studio and mandates from people above. Is it one of these things where you guys can like, you, you laid out what your story is and it's like, okay, go do it? Or is it one of these things where there's, you know what I mean, like how close is everyone I've watching? Had, I've had like a pretty, pretty incredible amount of freedom, which I like, I don't want to, I'm going to get used to it and I'll be like, wait, but I can't do all the things that I want now. So, you know, I brought this, uh, Josh and I wrote all the scripts and brought them to, to Vicky and everybody, Vicky and Jetavana, who's our other investor uh, out of China and everybody loved it. And so it was like for Josh and I, cause we do these kind of like quirky, weird things for somebody to be like, yeah, why don't you go make that? We were just kind of like, are you, are you fucking with us right now? What is this? <laughs> but you know, it's people really believe in the vision and believe in the idea a lot. So it's it's been really awesome having people be so excited about what we're trying to do. Uh, and it's been, a, a, we've had a lot of freedom, honestly. You, you mentioned that it's uh, a little bit in America. What's, what's a little sure. bit mean? It's uh, before Claire dives in, Got it. dives into the world, basically. Um, when I was doing my research to sit down with you, it said uh, that, in the, in the notes, that uh, you guys were already thinking about possibly two and three, like second, third sure. season. 
how much are you planting like the little Easter eggs for things that can go, or are you sort of like if we if it's successful, we'll talk about look it back and be like, what were those Easter eggs that we? <laughs> Um, we have a little bit. We have a little bit of a plan um, for some stuff, but at the same time, for me right now, like especially I'm in the middle of it, I'm just like, okay, just season one, just gotta, just gotta nail this, do, do a good job on this. But it's like, we definitely have talked a lot about like what we would do if we had a season two or season three, um, and where we could go with the whole thing. And it's, you know, it gets crazier, right? Because all of a sudden, if we're gonna go bigger, we're gonna go, you know, crazier. So uh, we've we've laid a little bit of groundwork to to kind of where it would go. Um, but for me right now, it's still the focus is just like, let's just finish one. <laughs> sure. What, uh, talk a little bit about the production side of it in terms of uh, like, what kind of production schedule do you have on this thing? Um, I mean, we're we're doing we're doing like twelve hour days. We're doing you know solid days. We're shooting I think twenty four, twenty five days total for the, for the whole thing. Okay. Um, so we is it one of these like six day weeks or five day weeks? It's like more like six day weeks. Yeah. Oh, so it's it's hardcore. Yeah, so we're we're getting in there. I mean, because it's like again, it's like we don't have a crazy budget, so we have to like we're trying to make we're trying to make this giant thing for this. You know what I mean? And so it's like let's we're putting we're putting in everything we can into it, and the team's working like working crazy hard for that. And we have we have uh, DPs from from the states. We have uh, a lot of guys from Korean dramas actually that are on the, on the crew, and we have some people from Korean movies and stuff. So it's this like big sort of like. You know Frankenstein of a crew that's really exciting to like have everybody together and working and then we're gonna do post like I was telling you at C47 where they did uh, Snowpiercer and, and tons and tons of Korean movies so and those are the good those guys are all like family to me because I've worked with I worked actually worked at the company for a while so it'll be I just had a meeting with them earlier today it was like great to have lunch and to sit down and get excited about what we're you know what we're putting together so sure uh, how'd you decide which camera are you using to shoot shooting with an epic uh, was it did, was there a debate on which camera or a little bit? I mean, I wanted to shoot something because we have some CG that we have to do. So I wanted to make sure that when I pass that over to my guy, that he has enough to work with. Uh, and of course, is like I want the best thing that I can get. You know what I mean? So sure. we definitely talked about shooting on A7S's, or because then we could shoot two cameras at the same time. We're just doing a single camera shoot right now. So um, it's time for you to play a game with me. Okay. Uh, it's called Save or Kill. I've been playing this with everyone. Oh boy! Yeah, get get ready. Uh, <laughs> One of these things you can save, one of these is a race from existence forever, what okay. would you like to save? Okay. It's a personality test. Okay. Jeez. Okay. Now, the key thing to know is these are not easy questions. Have you interviewed Chris Martin before? <laughs> uh, no, I have not played, okay. but um, ask him when the camera's off about something. <laughs> um, so here's the game. Uh, the first one is Star Wars or Star Trek. What would you like to save? I'll save Star Wars. Uh, the Wire or Mad Men? Uh... The Wire. Game of Thrones or Breaking Bad? Breaking Bad. People are going to hate me for that one. <laughs> Dude, it goes 50 50. Uh, Zelda or Mario? Oh, man. Zelda, because I have a childhood history filled with it. Uh, where are we at? Uh, Han Solo or Indiana Jones? Oh, Indiana Jones for sure. You are, you are very decisive. I give credit. <laughs> uh, the Beatles or Rolling Stones? Uh, you know, honestly, not a fan either, so. They're huge. They're both huge. I'd save the Beatles. Yeah, <laughs> you know what's funny? I just interviewed uh, Anthony Mackie, and he was not a fan of either. But you, so it's like, it's very weird. I know many people that say that. Uh, <coughs> Harry Potter or Lord of the Rings? Harry Potter. Iron Man or Captain America? Uh, Iron Man. In Sync or Backstreet Boys? In Sync, just because Justin Timberlake has really excelled afterwards. I would agree. Uh, Twilight or Fifty Shades of Grey? Neither. Twilight, because Justin's in our show. <laughs> and that's the correct answer. Uh, Alfred or Yoda? Uh, Yoda, he's a genius. Uh, this one's brutal. Let's see what, how, you, which, how it goes. Okay. Scorsese or Spielberg? Spielberg. DC or Marvel? Uh, Marvel, for sure. Back to the Future or Ghostbusters? Back to the Future. The Sopranos or Walking Dead? Sopranos. Michael Jackson or Prince? There it is. I was waiting this whole time for a facial reaction. Oh, no. That one. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, you know, I'll go Prince. <laughs> Batman or Superman? Uh, Batman. Not Woody? Superman fan. Really? Yeah. That is sacrilege, but I like both. No. Uh, Woody Allen or Mel Brooks? Mel Brooks. Seinfeld or Friends? Seinfeld, for sure. You'd be surprised how many of you go the other way just as much. Tarantino or Paul Thomas Anderson? 
Oh man, that's a tough one. I, uh, I, didn't I say at the beginning? Yeah. None of these were easy. I'll go. I'll go PTA just for my friends mostly. Uh, Blur or Oasis? Oasis, I guess. <laughs> Halloween or the Texas Chainsaw Massacre? Uh, Halloween. Um, thank you for playing the game. You're welcome. Um, my last thing for you, uh, for people that have never been to Korea, uh, what would you say or recommend to people to see and do or maybe learn about the culture? You know, I think the one thing that like really changed my life over here was learning Korean and all of a sudden like just life changes because it's like you can visit anywhere, right? Without knowing a language and you can really travel, but all of a sudden you know a language and you just dive so much deeper. That's probably like a huge step up. So, uh, you know, if not that, like Seoul just has so much to offer. There's so many places to check out, uh, food, uh, nightlife. I would say you need at least at least a week over here because you really you're going to be up every night until super late. You're never going to sleep. Uh, so there's hangover drinks uh, that you can find in any of the any of the, the small convenience stores. Those are a huge recommend. Um, Depends on the scene you want to see. Hongdae is, Hongdae is great. Shinsa, where you are right now, is fantastic. Uh, there's, I would say, go down to Busan, eat some of the, eat some raw fish down there. Uh, travel, travel and drink. I mean, just it's. Yeah, I have noticed people like to drink here. A little bit. Yeah, yeah I, I, bit. I did notice that just a touch. Yeah. Um, you, if you if you wake up anytime before nine, you're gonna see a couple people drinking oh, still. <laughs> I I am aware. Um, I'm gonna stop there and say thank you so much thank for your you. time, and thank you. Uh, I really look forward to seeing this. Great, let, thank let, you so much. Let me